Hello everyone! We are now in February and if you are already feeling behind on your organization system for 2019, I'm here for you. I believe, and this is the motto of my year, that if you want to achieve things in life, you need to start simple and you need to go back to basics to achieve the perfect balance of what you need to be productive and organized. This is why we are going to start with a free full organization system that will absolutely help you get your life together and have everything seamlessly organized into one ecosystem. So today we are going to talk, of course, about the Google Apps for productivity and organization. Basically, this means that the Google ecosystem includes a calendar, file managing, email managing with productivity tools, text editors and a note-taking app. Regarding the pros and cons of the Google ecosystem, I will start by saying that it's free. So as long as you have a compatible device, an internet connection and Google products aren't blocked in your country, you are able to access Google Apps. Also, there's synchronization between all the devices you use to access the same account and you have the ability to sign in into your organization system in any computer or device. There's also constant backing up of your information, so you'll never be afraid of losing anything. So there are simple tools that make your organization system that much easier to use and to manage. For cons, we can also take simplicity because it can be a burden for some users who prefer complex tools to organize their lives. And also the digital environment may not be very convenient or the best type for some people. I myself use a hybrid of an analog and a digital system. And there are some tasks that I prefer to do on paper. So if that's your case, and you'd prefer to do all of your organization in paper, that's just fine. Also, you mostly need an internet connection. So if you live in an area where that's hard to come by, you may have a lot of trouble making the most out of this ecosystem. To build the foundation of our organization system, we are going to start with Google Keep. And I believe that Google Keep is one of the most underrated organization apps out there. Yes, Google Keep is a very simple app, but it's really powerful because its simplicity is transported to other types of Google Apps like Calendar and Gmail. But we will talk about that later. So for now, what you need to know is that Google Keep acts as a dashboard where you can place post-it notes with all kinds of to-dos, of notes and reminders. So in your main dashboard, you can see these little notes that you can color code and then click and drag according to your own priorities, your hierarchy. And even if you want, you can simply establish blocks of color so you can see how many tasks you have according to the topic you chose for each color. The best way to organize your notes with Google Keep is basically establishing a color for each kind of topic you are choosing for each note. So for instance, here I have yellow for every YouTube related task and I have blue for every school related task. White tasks are personal tasks, including things like personal to-dos, appointments, financial stuff and so on. The second thing you can do to really organize your notes is using labels. These act as tags, so you can simply create a note, assign it a color, and then choose a label according to the topic of the note. So you can select the label on the left side of your screen to access all notes labeled with that name. Also, as I said before, you can click and drag every single note so you can have the order of notes that you prefer to get yourself organized. Also, since it's a Google product, you can also download Google Keep to your phone so it synchronizes with everything you do on your computer. When you migrate all of your to-dos, all of your notes, all of your project notes into Google Keep, you can definitely go to Google Calendar and start managing your time, your appointments and your tasks. My basic tip for Google Calendar to work is creating a calendar for each categorized sort of information you are trying to place in your calendar. So for instance, in my particular case, I use, for instance, red for family sharing tasks and appointments. I use purple for my history classes. I use orange for any YouTube related stuff. 
This is a really good way for you to understand which parts of your week are allotted to certain parts of your life and so on. The second tip I can give for Google Calendar users is using the upper part of your calendar to schedule daily tasks instead of hourly events. So even if you're using a calendar blocking technique to manage your time in your digital calendar, sometimes your events do not occur hourly, but instead they occur on a daily basis. This happens mostly with holidays, birthdays, and things like that. So what I do in these cases is creating that event, then assign it to one of those specific color-coded calendars and then drag the event up to the top of my calendar where it will be considered a daily event that I do not need to assign an hour for the event to be completed or finished. Also, Google Calendar has the function of syncing with all of your devices and also inviting and also allows you to invite people to share your calendar. This is really good for things like housework, your business, teamwork, or even scheduling meeting hours with book clubs, work groups, and so on. The power of your Google ecosystem really shows up here when you access the tools in the right tab. In the right tab, you have these little applets that you can access to open up different Google apps that can synchronize and can be used with your Google Calendar. So for instance, we have already set up all of our tasks in Google Keep, and by clicking the respective button on your Google Calendar app, you can access all of those tasks so you can better understand by looking at those tasks, those color-coded notes, how you need to schedule your time better, what type of to-dos you need to integrate into your calendar, what kind of goals you need to project in your schedule, and so on. Also, if you set reminders both in your Google Calendar and in your Google Keep apps, you can also get on track with your tasks and with your events by being smart with how you establish those alarms to go off in your phone. After that, I think it's time for you to manage all of your files with Google Drive. It will basically be the only file manager you need in case you have a permanent internet connection. So Google Drive is free until 15 gigs, which may definitely not be enough for you to keep all of your files, but 100 gigs goes for less than $2 per month, and if you're a student, that's what you'll need in case you deal with PDF and text documents mostly. Just like any file manager on your computer, Google Drives allows you to create folders and organize them according to name and color, so you can basically create a full-fledged file managing system online. That way you never fear losing your files, since Google Drive backs up your documents to the cloud, so they're always there even if your computer crashes. There's nothing really special about Google Drive in itself, it's a very simple and powerful tool for you to organize all of your files and being sure that they can be accessed anywhere if you cannot rely on a specific device to do all of your work. You also have sharing capabilities with other users and the good thing is you do not need to share your whole files with your friends and family because you can select the specific folders or files you want to share. Also, the good thing is that when you are storing documents in Google Drive, if they are text-based documents, you can quickly open them up in Google Docs and edit them on the go. And Google Docs is actually a pretty powerful text editor, although it's not as powerful as Microsoft Word, but it definitely has all the tools you need, including a commenting interface as well as sharing capabilities that make it a solid text editor in case you need something a little bit more structured than Google Keep. It also has constant cloud backup, so you'll never worry about losing your files. And although the tools are nothing too elaborate, they will make the job just fine. Finally, I want to talk about Gmail. And I'm not going to talk about Gmail in itself as a mailing service in comparison to other mailing services, but I want to talk about the organization tools inside Gmail that make it the perfect tool for you to organize your mail if you are into the Google ecosystem. So the first thing I love about Gmail is the ability to color code and label my emails effectively. Just like I do with my calendars, I have very specific labels in my Gmail, things like answered, not answered, sponsorship inquiry, blog posts, any school related emails and so on. And every time I get an email, I will automatically label it according to one of those things and I will just label all of those unanswered or unopened emails with that label so I know I need to get back to them as soon as I can. 
The second thing I enjoy about Gmail is that integration with other Google apps like Calendar, Google Keep and Tasks. So basically you can open that type on the right side of your screen and Gmail lets you peek into those apps and use them side by side to interconnect all information from that same account. This really comes in handy if for some instance you are using your Gmail to schedule a meeting and you need to access your calendar. Instead of having to access the calendar in another tab or even in another device if you prefer it that way, you can simply open the calendar tab inside your Gmail account and see if you have a free slot of time to schedule that meeting and just type your mail right on the go. The third thing I really enjoy about Gmail is the ability to have different inboxes. So for instance, I have a ton of social emails arriving every single day to my inbox. People who are messaging me on social media, uh, emails that are getting to my YouTube account, things related to my Instagram, people replying to blog posts on my website and so on. And usually those emails are not a priority for me to answer, so they're all filtered into the social inbox so I can get to them when I can get to them. Instead of having to constantly see my main inbox being floated with promotional emails, with forum responses, with social reminders and so on. I want to thank Skillshare for partnering with me today and being incredible at supporting more than 7 million people in their learning journey. Skillshare is an online learning community with more than 25,000 classes in dozens of different categories and they can help you build new skills, develop new strategies and learn more about anything you feel curious about. Skillshare's portfolio includes productivity and business masterclasses, tutorials on how to work with different types of software, language classes, arts and design courses, and so on. Here you are seeing a class on easy project management with Google, which will be pretty useful in case you want to take what you've learned from this video further. Also, premium membership gives you unlimited access to all these incredible classes, so no individual payments required, and since Skillshare costs less than $10 a month for the yearly subscription, it's the perfect companion for the learning enthusiasts. Also, if you are one of the first 500 people to click the link in the description box, you'll get your first two months of unlimited classes for free. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel and I'll see you next week with more college, university and organization related videos. Bye!